now continue with more of The Mark Milton Show with The Smash on 590 The Fan and 590TheFan.com. All right. You're listening to The Mark Milton Show with The Smash. Big time contributor, Sir Smashington, brought that delicious treat I, to us. Did I not tell you that's, that's the song <laughs> right there? Solly's face. Solly's we cool, it, we, man. We came up with a new nickname for David Solomon during the break. Yeah, Solly. Solly. Solly gave you like the yeah. death stare when you... Uh, when he let me, let me tell you what, man. Solly can do that because we have uh, two huge computer screens between me and him. I can't see him. I can see he him. can't see me. We got triangulation. Going. <laughs> I can see everything. On his if face. I could see everything, it wouldn't be triangulation. It'd be strangulation. I'll tell you that. All right. <laughs> could be. Understand that. <laughs> it could be. Good song, Smash. Way to go. Yeah, good, that's good. Uh, uh, not Willie Dixon. Little Milton. Is it really? Little don't Milton? act like you know who Little Milton is. I don't. Is. Was that his name? That's his, his name, name, Little mm-hmm. Milton. Yeah. Well, it's a great song, and it ties yeah. into what I want to talk about, which this week, I mean, I got, like, tears in my eyes yeah. watching David Backus announce, essentially announce his retirement here yeah. in St. Louis. Darren Pang did an amazing interview after the game. And, you know, Backus had a great career here. Um, I don't know if he ever kind of became a superstar like some other Blues yeah. or Cardinal players did, but I mean, he played for ten years. Yeah, he was a captain for five, so those are pretty good, you know, good credentials. Yeah. Um, sadly, you know, didn't win the Stanley Cup. He, right. he left via free agency. I think it was sixteen, right it, before. It was after the Blues went to the conference final in twenty sixteen. Yeah, he, he left wanted for that Boston. fifth guaranteed year. Doug Armstrong wouldn't give it, so he smartly. Boston. Doug oh, Armstrong yeah. smartly let him go because he basically, I mean, he was like a healthy scratch. For Boston, I think maybe even in his first contract year, and then he ended up going out to Anaheim. And anyway, the point is to see his uh, love for the city of St. Louis. Yep. As much as I bash, you know, the city and our elected officials in the city and the county, there's something about this place that just captivates and, and, and endears. Is that the right word? Endears. Yeah. The athletes that come through here and spend time here. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's. I feel like it is unique to St. Louis. I really do. I feel like when you look at the Cardinals, when you look at the Blues, even the Rams, I mean, the alumni who spent right. time here, as you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, fall in love with this region. Uh, maybe it's because their kids grow up here, whatever the case may be. Many end up coming back here, living full time. Uh, and just to see Bacchus and the emotion, I think it was more than just his retirement. It really was, you know, all the emotions came back to him. Oh, very much. And first off, Special kudos is deserved for Anaheim Ducks coach Dallas Eakins for giving him the chance to play because Backus has not been a regular in the lineup. Mm-hmm. He's mostly been on the taxi squad, but in the media, I was able to be one of several who were able to catch up with Backus after the game, and it wasn't lost upon David just how significant it was to get the chance not just to kind of have a farewell to get a last game for closure if this is indeed his last game or was his it last game. It seems like it probably is. And but, did you get the Mark Milton show flag up in there? Well, we still have to get rid of the whole <laughs> Zoom thing, but it definitely wasn't lost on back as <laughs> just how significant it was to be able to do it in St. Louis. Yeah, no, yeah, it was great. Time, I, thought, I think oh, there's sorry, uh, not a lot of guys get that opportunity and, and it's been well documented. This place means a, a ton to me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm grateful certainly to have the stint I had in Boston and for the Ducks to allow me to, you know, kind of have a little bit of a swan song here in Anaheim. And it's been uh, just such a blessing to be in Southern California during this pandemic where my kids and wife can be outside regularly. But, uh, you know, to be back where it all started and to, you know, be in a building that I spent so many nights honing my craft and doing what I love in the cities that I absolutely love, um, you know, that's... If you gave me a blank sheet of paper, paper and said, "How do you want to end your career?" Uh, this might have been second to, uh, you know, hoisting the Stanley Cup and, and going out in that style. So uh, that's not always a reality. So, you know, this is pretty amazing. That is great stuff. Good work, Dave. Thanks. And that was actually my question. I had asked him right there too. Wow! Look at Dave. Just solid. Bringing bringing the heat. Doing it for the Mark Milton show. <laughs> that's right. The Mark Milton show. With the smash and producer oh, Dave, hi. broadcasting from the Miller Furniture Studios here in Kirkwood, Missouri, presented by STLTaxler.com. If you've got tax problems, give us a call, 833-LAW-1040 is our phone number. Again, it's 833-LAW-1040, or you can visit STLTaxler.com. Again, it's STLTaxler.com. We'll take you to the Milton Law Group website. Yes, sir. Remember, you know, the choice of a lawyer oh, yeah. is an important decision. 
Should not be based solely no. on advertisements. You know, uh, listening to you speak with Solly over there, and I didn't get a chance to get a, a word in. I I think I will take that receptionist job over at the Milton Law Group. Thank you. Legal assistant. I don't think you could say receptionist anymore yeah, or anymore. secretary. No, okay. what, Spain, I want to get your take. I mean, you were around the Rams a long time. I was. That team moved here from California. So those You're... guys sort of, you know, ended up in St. Louis through really no, <clears throat> no choice of their own at that point. Right. What was your sense of how they felt about this city, this region, and, and you know, the alumni and all that. And what, what, what did you see? from Well, your after they had those uh, two Super Bowl seasons, they were so into St. Louis because the St. Louis fans really came out for them. Now, before that, they didn't really come out for them as far as the mentality. They may have been there in the stands, not so many really, but... It's hard for a new team, though, to get that, exactly. you know, you got to build that loyalty. Exactly right. you got to build the reason for people to like you, and the reason in sports is victory. And they weren't having those victories in the, those early days. But, boy, when they got to that Super Bowl, especially with the success story of Kurt Warner and then onward with the team, that was great. And then they had the off season as far as uh, getting to the, back to the Super Bowl is concerned. And then, and I've always been angry about this, the second time they went to the Super Bowl, that was the first Super Bowl that New England won. And it made me mad because we had come back and we had tied that game. All right. And if Lovey's defense would have just held on defense, they, New England, wouldn't have gotten close enough to do the field goal. Uh, exactly right. And so there was a good support until the dwindling again to being the Rams team that they were prior to the Super Bowl years. Right. And then after that, it was kind of like it just fade, well, faded but, out. But I'm talking about the like the players themselves, the guys like they Marshall Falk. I mean, yeah. they, I mean, they spent a lot of time here after their careers. I'm, my understanding, I mean, guys like Torrey Holt and Bruce, you know, I, Isaac Bruce, you've, I've seen interviews where, you know, they still, you know, they'll give a shout out to St. Louis yeah. even when they're, it's kind of BS. They'll get called back for you know alumni events with the LA Rams, but St. Louis really right. was their their home. I think Bruce was Isaac Bruce was one of the few players that you know was on those Super Bowl teams that was with mm -hmm. the LA Rams. Right. Oh, oh yeah. I think St. Louis will hold a very special place for the entire Greatest Show teams. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to see though on the last teams that were here, which guys seemed genuinely bummed about leaving St. Louis, mm -hmm. and which guys couldn't wait to get out of town for example <laughs> most of the quote skilled players although some of them you have to question how skilled they were at the skilled positions but a lot of the wide receivers a couple of the tight ends and i emphasize one or two maybe because they're also you know i don't want to lump cody harkey in it who was a great guy and really cared about the community so it'd be unfair to say everyone but uh, there were quite a few guys on that team who couldn't wait to get to L.A. and oh, many yeah. of well, them. Well, also keep in mind it was around the time of the Ferguson too. I mean, when they left, and I feel oh, like yeah, there right. was a lot of. I remember it was some of the guys came out and Jared Cook and some yeah, others. Right, hands Jared up, Cook. don't shoot. I mean, it started right. to kind of unravel. Yeah. Um, I think from you know. Well, a lot of the community uh, came to a dislike because of that. Right. It, you don't bring politics into that entertainment uh, arena like that. Let alone that, a you know? completely false narrative. But, well, that's for another another right. segment. Um, I also, well, you look at the Cardinals. I mean, the history with yeah. past Cardinals sticking around St. Louis, right. living here, making it their home. It's pretty remarkable when you think they could literally live anywhere they want, and many yeah. of them choose to make St. Louis home. Oh, especially the Whitey Ball era. In fact, Whitey Herzog was just on with Frank Cusimano this week here on 590 The Fan, but... He has always made a point of saying about how he emphasized to the players how important it was for them to live in St. Louis year-round. And right. lo and behold, a lot of those guys still live here today. And even somebody like a Mike Matheny, you know, Mike Matheny was already living in St. Louis when he signed with the Cardinals That's in right. 2000 because he met a St. Louis in at school in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and... You know, I used to get my hair cut, uh, same place as Whitey Herzog over in Belleville, Morris Barbershop. Now, it was, it was a white tell. guy, it was a white guy, older gentleman, who spelled his name like Maurice, uh -huh. but he pronounced it Morris. Morris. But I always called him Maurice. Maurice, yeah. But anyway, Whitey Herzog would get flat tops yeah. at Morris Barbershop on West yeah. Main in Belleville. I would also get flat tops as a youngster. Do you also and wear I would get the... the Numbers in my back. You know, you would etch the numbers when I was playing baseball oh, as a kid. The lightning the bolts. Type stuff. Oh, oh, that. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just wondering, do you wear the uh, the earpieces that uh, Whitey uh, wears also for his hearing? <laughs> I, I honestly, that seems like did, kind did of Did you hear what I just said? I heard that. Am okay. I being loud? 
Am I be allowed? Well, that's because you don't have the earpieces in. Well, I need, you, the thing is, I think I do your need, volume. I think I do need yeah. a smash. Here I need to confess something. I've been messing with Mark's headphone volume from <laughs> my massive control board here that you can't even <laughs> Did see. Did you just take off your headphones because I'm so loud? Well, you are quite loud. See, and I the, think I am losing my yeah. hearing. I'm going to go get it checked out. And it makes me think, my goodness, if that's the way he is with me and Solly. <laughs> How is he at home? That's just, I just what I'm thinking. I, I'm my wife has made comments about me not listening, but I, th I don't know if it's so much a hearing problem as much as just selective. Uh, I might call Whitey and see about uh, what those I might do that, but, things are. Yeah. Or I don't think Mars Barbershop is still open, but you can maybe go check out yeah. Mars Barbershop on West Main, West Main and Belleville. In or a Belleville? flat top or a nice trim. You think they do uh, beards? <laughs> I don't know, probably. So that's what Whitey was indicating. It was very funny, in fact. It was the anniversary of the 1982 team, the 30th anniversary. And I asked Whitey pretty much a softball question because, you know, or working in sports radio, we like to hear actualities from the people who are actually involved. So I asked him a softball of the roster manipulation when he took over, not just as manager, as general manager. And he goes, yeah, I traded out 15 guys for 10, but you already know that. Now go get a haircut. <laughs> because there were no cameras by that point, so he wasn't afraid to show his true color. I'm sorry, I thought you were going to say he made a reference to Mars Barbershop, but he he would always he would go there for his haircuts, and yeah, Mars had all kinds of cardinal. Well, that was there. an indirect yeah. reference. Yeah, no, uh, it was. It was, it was yeah, close. who who cut your hair now? Um, who cuts your? Oh, you don't have any hair. No. Sorry. Oh, ouch. <laughs> Um, I have a what, couple. Are you using a Floby or what's your what's your deal? I need partner? to get some you need work a done. I'm gonna get some some work done. I think you need a. Flo we need to get a Hans Weinman sponsorship. No, you need a Floby. What is that? It's like a vacuum cleaner on your head, and you just <laughs> roll it over your hair, and it sucks up I gotta the do hair. Something. I'm losing volume. I'm losing losing. You are losing, losing. volume. I know. <laughs> that makes you look more uh, legal. So yeah, it makes you look older. Which is well, like, you know that means why? Sometimes people say when I tell people I'm 35 years old, like, oh my yeah. god, you look like you're yeah. 50. Righto. But I also wear, you know, pleated gabardines. So not many thirty-five-year-olds wear a nice pleated pants. I don't even have good fashion <laughs> sense, and I know I you love don't, a wear, good, don't wear pleats anymore. I look good, love a good pleated pant. But no, in all seriousness, I I really Are just they to, tough? to wrap this up. I mean, it really is a testament to this region that so many athletes, entertainers make St. Louis. Like yourself, I mean, you're not from St. Louis, and you came here as part of a career move, and you yes. stayed, and you love St. Louis. I do love St. Louis. That's why I came back to St. Louis. That's right. It's I a great lived in Phoenix for three years. I love Phoenix, but St. Louis was the call. It's a great place. Yep. All right, you're listening to the Mark Milton Show with the Smash Broadcasting from the Miller Furniture Studios, presented by STLTaxLawyer.com. We'll be right back in a second.